Hey, what's going on, guys? So, today in this video, I'm just going to be doing a tutorial, and this is going to be quite a long tutorial. And in this tutorial, I said tutorial like a thousand times, I'm going to be showing you how to boost your FPS in games. And this may work a lot more than uh, for some computers and others, but for most, it should boost it. But if it doesn't, then well, that's pretty weird because all of these she uh, steps should work, or at least most of them anyway. At least one of them should work for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my performance options. To go there, just type in advanced system settings. And then you can go in that. And then you can go in performance and settings when you're in the advanced tab. And then this is just, uh, so basically if you add best performance, it would just disable them all so it would look worse. I'm not going to do it because it might mess something up when I'm recording, but you get the idea. And you can just let Windows choose what's best for my computer. That doesn't necessarily mean the fastest. That just means, like, say, save taskbar thumbnail previews could, like, mess it up or something. It could have an error, for example. I think that's really what it means. Or you could just have custom, have whatever you want on. But because I like the best appearance, I'm just going to have best appearance. You could do apply and then okay, you wouldn't need to do okay, but oh well, who cares, I just do apply anyway. So the next thing is select the number of processors you have. This might not necessarily mean it's faster, but I always do it anyway. So it's not like it's definitely using the lowest or lower than the highest. So to do that, just type in msconfig and it will take you to uh, system configuration. Let's go to the boot tab and then advanced options and then tick the select number of processors and type in uh, go to whatever the maximum is so for me that would be six because it's the one uh, the furthest down on this list and you don't need to worry about maximum memory so i'll just get rid of that because i'm not going to use that so just basically select whatever the highest one is so it's not accidentally using five or less it's definitely set to six and then just do okay and okay once again and the next step is to clean unnecessary files in the temp and prefetch folders there might be more than this but i definitely know of these two i'm not going to do it because that usually messes up my commentary so i'm not going to do that basically just gets rid of it because it's deleting some of the temp uh, which is basically your computer just stores files say when you're recording you can't delete it but for some reason in audacity it didn't say that it, it, you just delete it and it's gone forever so just type in temp uh, temp percent temp percent and then go to that folder and you can do control A and then delete or shift delete. I'll get onto that in a minute. And then it'll basically just get rid of all these uh, files or folders, I should say. I think that, yeah, that's files as well. And it will say or it should say that some are in use, but some aren't, even though it still says that. So I just do skip and then delete them one by one. And sometimes uh, they work, but for some reason, Windows thinks it's a being used, so it doesn't get rid of it although it isn't being used which i don't know why it does that but yeah right so the next folder is prefetch just type in prefetch or just type in run and then uh, go in run and type in prefetch it does say uh, you don't have you don't currently have permission to access this folder uh, but it says to click continue to permanently access uh, get access to this folder it does say permanently but Still, you have to do it every time for some reason. And then the same thing, just do Control A and then Delete. And that will get, uh, get rid of all of them. And as I said, just do them manually, but for that as well as the temp folder. So the next thing is disable unnecessary startup programs. That's in MS Config again. Or because um, in Windows 10 it's not on there, but I think it does for Windows 7 and Windows 8. Or rather, it does have it. But for Windows 10, you're definitely going to have to go, uh, go to Task Manager. So just right click on the taskbar and go to Task Manager. And then uh, just click on uh, Startup. And then basically you can uh, sort them by name or whatever. Just say click on it and then disable it. Although I'm not going to do that because, yeah, I don't really need to. I don't know what checkout date is. And some of you might not know, so you might want to search it up. Or just not, uh, not uh, disable it. And the best way to see which is the best one, uh, well, by best, I mean the one that's using the most, uh, it's impacting it the most, is just if it says high or something like that. If it says none, then 
I'm pretty sure it won't affect it. If it's on low, it might affect it just a bit, but not as much as high. So yeah, you could just disable them there. So the next thing is to uninstall uh, unnecessary programs. So to do that, just go to control panel and then go to uninstall a program. If you have uh, them sorted by large icons or small, just uh, find programs or features, but I just have it in category because it's faster. Well, it's not actually, but I just use it like that anyway because it's a bit more compact. And then just basically right click on then you don't want here and then uninstall. It might say uninstall slash change, but some it's just uninstall like that. But for this one it is uninstall slash change. Although change, I'm not really sure if it does anything. Or at least not for some programs, but I'm not sure about that. So the next thing is to delete deleted files. So what I mean by that is just go to the recycle bin. This is what I was saying about shift delete. Basically what shift delete does is permanently delete some. But if you just do delete, it will take it to the recycle bin. And as you can tell when I search recycle bin, it might not always be like this. But it doesn't have it. It just says show all high common icons on the desktop. Click on that if you don't have it on the desktop. And then select recycle bin and apply. And then just go inside the recycle bin and say I made a text document. Then I'll drag that into that or this deleting would do the same. And it would come up here. But I'll show you if I move this out and then so like if I do delete it would go in there. If I do shift delete, as you can see it says do you want, are you sure you want to permanently delete this file? And now as you can see the recycle bin doesn't update, the icon doesn't either. That's what shift deleting does basically and I'm just going to disable that because I don't really like it on my desktop. So the next thing is to use CC Cleaner. Well I keep getting confused, it's not CC Cleaner, it's C Cleaner. Um, that is something you have to download off the web. But once you've installed it or you have it ready, search a C Cleaner. And I expect most people call it CC Cleaner even though it is C Cleaner. But even I get confused with that and I know that it is C Cleaner and not CC Cleaner. So in the cleaner tab, uh, tab which should be default, just go to run cleaner and then OK. But as I said, uh, for the temp folders and stuff like that, I'm not going to do it. So basically that just gets rid of any temp files. Uh, I might do this later, but not now because it might mess up my commentary. I'm not sure if it does the same, but whatever. So the next thing is registry. So you can just do a uh, scan for issues and then it will come up with some. But just for this as well, um, I'm not going to fix them because it might mess it up but I haven't got many here as you can see but there are a lot and they don't really affect your computer but I always do this anyway sometimes there can be a big one but that's never really happened to me or at least I haven't cleaned it with C cleaner but anyway so you could just do f uh, fix selected issues and then no unless you do want to back up the registry in case it does affect it or it, it just does something harmful to your computer which I'm sure it won't, but just in case it does, now you know that you should do yes next time. So next thing is to use Razer Cortex slash uh, Razer Game Booster. It is actually called Razer Cortex, and you have to download uh, download this as well. But it is actually uh, Razer Cortex, but some people say Razer Game Booster. I say that myself, but it's actually called Razer Cortex. So I, I okay, I went on it, but it didn't do anything. Then it came up. Basically, you can just add your game and then go to boost and then uh, just have automatic boost on. So, that basically, if I go into Minecraft, I don't think it will work but sometimes. I'm not sure why it doesn't every time, but whatever. Uh, sometimes it might say like nine processes suspended and then it might say things like 100% uh, RAM freedom or whatever. Maybe not 100% because yeah, that probably just make your computer crash. But stuff like that, it just says that. So I always have that on, and you could do a manual boost anyway. And you can also have your FPS enabled, which for some reason doesn't display on mine. Although I might have to do Control Alt F or whatever's in here. For me, it's Control Alt F. But yeah, I don't need it on, but I just keep it on anyway. Cause yes, why not? And the next thing is to use the highest performance in the power options. So just go to the start and type in power options, and it will take you to power options. And by default, it would be balanced, just select high performance. There will be some additional plans like Power Saver or the Razer Cortex Power Plan, which, as I said, was a Razer Game Booster. 
and there's also for me Samsung high performance but it might not be that with you if you don't have anything to do with Samsung or on your computer or anything but I'm not sure about that so I just have it at high performance for the best maybe Cortex could be faster but to my knowledge high performance is the best so I just have that selected anyway and Samsung high uh, performance could be better but I would just recommend leaving it at high performance because I know that definitely works but you can test it out and see if there's a difference on what it what it does to your computer. So the next thing is to use disk cleanup. Uh, so just type in disk cleanup. You just type in D and it will come up. Uh, disk cleanup unless you have some programs it might not do but I'm not sure. And then just let the drives you want uh, to clean up and then just do OK. But I'm not going to do it because that also uh, cleans the temp files which I don't want to do. Because that might mess it up and as you can see there it is. Good, I haven't done anything bad, I don't think. And the next thing is to use uh, defrag. So just search uh, defrag and it'll come up with... Oh, uh, it'll come up with this first. But you just want to select the other one because that doesn't really do anything. It just comes up with command prompt and I don't know what it does. And then just click on the second one. Or just so it comes up with this one. And it'll come up with uh, things like your SSD drives. Uh, and your hard, dr uh, hard drives. And you can just optimise them, and I'm not sure exactly what that does, but I know it definitely works. Might just be another cleaner type thing, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So you can search that up if you want to. So the next thing is to load graphics in the game. So if you don't know what I mean, then just say it was with Minecraft. I'm obviously not going to do this. Well, at least not obvious, but I'm not going to do it. So if I went to Minecraft, I'd just go to Escape, Options, and then Video Settings. And then instead of say having graphics look fancy, I just change them to fast. I have made a video previously, just search up how to boost FPS on my channel. Don't search up on my channel. <laughs> Don't search that. I mean just on my channel search uh, how to boost FPS. And it has uh, uh, a thousand FPS boost in the title, so you can just search that as well. But anyway, so yeah, so that's basically what I mean. And it's not just graphics, but yeah. I'm not going to go over that because it would take a while, so yeah. I'm going to go over something in Minecraft, or at least in the launcher, but I'm not going to go over those though. So anyway, the second to last thing is to set priority of games in the task manager. So just do a uh, right click, or, uh, and then task manager, or I didn't say this before, but you can do control alt and escape, or control si uh, shift escape. I'm not sure which works, so I'm just going to test it out. But right, it's control uh, shift escape. You can also do control alt delete and then click on task manager and there could be a few other ways as well. But say I was in Minecraft right now, it come up with Java, I just right click, go to details, I know this is a task manager, but I'm just showing it to you as the example. And have the one that's using the most, or the one that's selected, and then right click set priority and then set it to high and, uh, or you can just do above normal or real time, which I don't recommend because that could do something bad to your computer. Although it hasn't before when I've done it, which I haven't most of the time. Most of the time I don't do that because I usually forget and you have to do that every time anyway. It can't, it's not just a default setting or anything. So yeah, you have to do that manually every time, which is unfortunate. But there could be a program out there that just does it automatically. Although I would doubt there is, but there could be. So yeah, you can research that if you want to as well. So I talked about uh, going in the Minecraft launcher. And this is what I'm going to do in the last step. So the last step is allocate more RAM to your game in the game. So I'm just going to go, for example, in Minecraft, in the Minecraft launcher. Might be different for different games. You might not even be able to do it for different games. But for Minecraft, it's exactly like this. So when you're in the Minecraft launcher, just go to edit profile or you can make a new one. And then just uh, check the box JVM arguments. And it might uh, may have a bunch of random numbers and letters. So just get rid of all that and then type in uh, negative uh, capital X, MX, and the MX was lowercase. And for my computer, I put in 4 gigabytes. To check how much RAM your computer has, just go to the start and type in a uh, system. And it will say I have, well, it says I have 8 gigabytes of RAM. So basically what you want to do, you might want to use less, especially if you have a lot on your computer. You can use more, but that might, uh, may do a bit of harm to your computer. Although I wouldn't think uh, five gigabytes instead of four would do much uh, of a difference for eight gigabytes. But 
Oh wow, so I'm just warning you there. So I got 8 gigabytes, so I just type in 4, obviously 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then just do a capital G, and then basically what that means is, just say this was, say the minus, such just there, and then say this is uh, allocate, and then 4 gigabytes. Or you don't put uh, B at the end, you just put in G. And basically that just allocates more RAM to your Minecraft. So that was it for this tutorial, hopefully this helped you, if it did then smash that like button and I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it helped you and thanks for watching and goodbye.